Hello, I'm Scott Borders. Welcome to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we find ourselves back in Westport, Indiana at a beautiful church, the Christian Church of Westport. And joining me today is the pastor of that church, Mike Bartlett. And pastor, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Scott. You? Well, tell us a little bit, if you will, about some of the history of which there's a lot, being that this is one of the older churches in the community. Tell us a little bit about the history of the church. Well, the history of the Christian church originally started in the 1800s in a uh, former building downtown. But since that time, uh, after some growth and some development of the town, uh, the people of the, of the community and the people of the church decided to buy some property here and, and build this building which we're in today. Uh, this building was built in 1912. The cool thing about it is uh, most of the materials used for this building were all local native stuff. Very interesting. Now you were telling me a little bit, speaking of building material, we had an original baptistry that had kind of an interesting makeup to it. Yes, uh, the original baptistry was made out of copper. So it was one large copper tub uh, without a heater. Uh, so anytime there were, was a baptism, of course, it, the water was pretty chilly. Kind of cool though, indeed. Now you also have a very interesting thing outside up in the steeple. A lot of churches have a bell. Yours has a little bit of a neat twist to it. Yes, uh, the bell that we currently have in our building actually came out of our old original building. Uh, it was ordered uh, before the Civil War, but it was not able to be delivered to Westport until after the Civil War. And, and so we still have it today. We still ring it today. And it rings pretty true, really. The cool thing about that too, Scott, is uh, our church history tells us this bell came from the Pennsylvania mm -hmm. Bell Company, which actually made the, uh, the original Liberty Bell. Now you've been here about 19 years, Mike, and you've seen a lot of changes over that time. But even before then, this church has changed quite a bit, including some of the additions outside in the parsonage. Tell us about some of those buildings and some of their ages and how that history is. Sure, worked. sure, I'd love to. Well, this building, like I said, was built in 1912. And when uh, my wife Rhonda and I came here, the congregation was pretty small. Originally, we started with six adults and two kids. And uh, since that point in time, God's really blessed us. We've really been able to get involved in the community, establish some roots in the community again. So the building next door to us was built four years ago. We actually purchased that. Uh, and built that building there. But uh, it's kind of amazing that the pews is original 1912. Uh, the stained glass, beautiful glass, of course, it was put in in 1912 when, when the building was built as well. Since that point in time, we did have a gentleman come from Bloomington, Indiana, who uh, is known around the world for stained glass work to look at our, our windows. And he was very impressed that uh, they're still in the condition they are in. We actually had the one over the doorway uh, repaired, but that's the only one since that point in time that's had any major work to it. And that's one of the striking features you see when you come into the church are those beautiful stained glass windows. Now one thing you told us earlier that I found kind of interesting, this church is not necessarily in the in original intended location and it's hard to tell from the outside, but it's located on a hilltop or at least it was. Yes, originally, uh, as I was saying earlier, the original church, uh, Christian church was formed in the 1840s. The first building was built in 1855 and it was downtown. And as the congregation began to grow and the community began to expand a little bit, some people at the church decided they wanted to be a focal point. And so it's hard to tell now, but we're actually on part of the edge of town in 1900, early 1900s and up on a hill so we could kind of overlook the rest of the town. And so that, that was their vision to take Jesus's words literally and be the light on the hill. And like you said, some of the expansion at the church has been a result of church growth over the past couple of decades. Your wife was showing me some of the buildings or some of the rooms in the inside very small, uh, including a kitchen that was the size of most people's bathroom. That is true. And, and actually maybe even smaller, like a closet. Uh, some of the cool features here, and you can still see uh, some evidence of it. This building was lit with gas lights. <laughs> and uh, we actually have one of the original gas lights, but it's being refurbished or I would love to show it to you today. But it, uh, this building itself, from the wall standing, the wall behind me, uh, this was actually the first part of the building. And like I said, it was built in 1912. The build, the structure behind us 
was actually purchased and paid for by the ladies auxiliary group here in the church in the in the 1930s mm. and uh, in the back room uh, is where they actually had their church dinners and opportunities they dug the basement out after the church was built yeah. Now, we had talked a little bit about some of the people that have attended over the years. You also had some people that are relatively famous. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, first of all, we uh, had uh, Helen Keller. Helen Keller, according to the Greensburg Daily News, visited through this area in the 1955 era. And so Helen Keller, according to our church records, actually was in attendance for one of our church services back in, in 1955. Recently, uh, we had another famous gentleman that was here. His name is Bob Russell. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Russell is a minister from the Southeast Christian Church in Louisville, Kentucky. And so Bob was here and preached to us uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Now, Pastor, as I come in here and see, this is kind of a modern musical setup for, uh, for church music, but it hasn't always been that way. Tell me a little bit about the progression of that here at this church. Sure. Well, Scott, when I came here, like I said, when my wife and I came here in October of 1998, the congregation was fairly small. Um, and, and so the traditional service that they, that they held was pretty much a traditional service. And the fact that with the music, and, and by the way, when I first came, we had a baby grand piano. Uh, we had a large uh, pump type organ that was pretty cool. Uh, the traditional service, you know, uh, they had a reading of the Old Testament, a reading of the New Testament, multiple prayers and, and various things like that. And so what we wanted to do uh, here is capture some of the traditional elements with the glass, with the pews, and, and so on and so forth. But we have introduced some of more of the, of the modern instruments that you see in many of the churches today, such as an electronic piano, uh, guitars, and, and bass, and, and uh, uh, what we call the box. It's actually called the cajon. And so we've added some percussion instruments. And the church well. has, has been okay with that so far. It probably was a, a slow transition at it, first. It was a very slow transition, and that came about by me simply playing an acoustic guitar about once every other month to <laughs> kind of move us into this situation that we have today. One particular piece of, of musical paraphernalia, if you will, there's an instrument over there I'm not even real sure I'm familiar with. Tell me a little bit about that unique instrument you have. Sure, that, that's actually called a lap steel, and it, it's, it's played a lot in uh, such as bluegrass music and so on and so forth, but the gentleman that plays that, his name is Dennis Newland, and Dennis is, is actually very good, and believe it or not, that actually sounds really, really good, and even some of our new modern praise and worship. And you know, sharing of, about the musical instruments, when Rhonda and I came, we had a very unique uh, musical instrument that was played twice a month in this congregation, and that was a harmonica. <laughs> uh, we had a lady in our congregation who was very, very good at a, playing a harmonica, and at twice a month she would work her way to the front and, and stand and play a harmonica. And I used to say that we were the only church in the United States that had a <laughs> harmonica special every Sunday. And so that was pretty cool. Now, one more thing I noticed in looking around this church is there's kind of this almost uh, added room in the back, in which you have some chairs and it looks like some fill-in type of seats. Tell me a little bit about how that came about or what that's used for back there with the, the big door. Sure. Well, those doors back there are, are pull-down doors and what it was originally built for was they would really have their Sunday school class back there. That was a men's Sunday school class. And the ladies, of course, they, they got the big room uh, for themselves. But that, the doors actually was a separation, if you will. Well, Pastor Mike, I want to thank you very much for inviting us into your beautiful church and some of the things that we got to see, some of the great architecture in here. Thanks again. Thank you, Scott, for stopping by. It's and been we, our pleasure. We want to thank you for tuning in and watching yet another episode of History in Your Own Backyard from Westport, Indiana and the Christian Church of Westport, Indiana. This is Scott Borders along with Pastor Mike Bartlett. Remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often.